perfect attendance every Friday night back to back. And so that's why I was like kind of like, so my department is, is interesting because I didn't realize until this quarter she was going to be on the schedule. So I have to make sure that I'm open now for her on a Friday night because she's teaching to back to back. <laughs> Thanks a lot. But no, that's, that's, <laughs> but no, that's why. But the students, is the, it? the retention rate in her class. I guess they measure it by how many students you were able to keep and maintain until the end of the quarter. And how many actually follow you? I guess that would be a great number. So, and the, the, the other question is how you had asked this earlier also, to some extent, you've had some other faculty who expressed an interest, but um, do you, is there a program other than you, or, or, did, or to, how do you plan to scale this or replicate this to get other, many more faculty interested in this? There is a program, there's the teaching and learning commons within our school, which is supposed to be faculty and professional development for the faculty. And we're actually working in conjunction with them to do certain seminars and try to get people to do it and try to see. And another thing that they're doing, and we're actually piloting this, uh, I actually piloted it. Um, we have a specialized uh, program. They picked a professor who's the best in the world to, to uh, co-teach. So I actually go into the classroom with the professor and I actually co-teach with the person and I show them the methodology, like I show them how to do this at the same time simultaneously and I come in for two, three weeks and then I leave so that I can know what they're doing the approach or I can kind of be a direct, kind of hands-on facilitator for the professor who needs it. So that's a new thing that we're actually doing. I'm praying because they want to give me a stipend to do that all over the campuses. So like all the teachers that we've had the most complaints about, that's usually who you, that's your target. You know the person that's like, oh, so-and-so is horrible, then you go and you get that target. And you know, sometimes you can turn a misunderstanding or a misguided person into a great professor. They you just get them to look with different goggles. <coughs> so that's what I'm gonna be there for. So not only do we have that professional development part, but we also have this kind of I'm coming in to save you part. How is that like that sounds like from your end that sounds like it could exhausting. be exhausting disaster. And exhausting. And, and that goes back to building those relationships because ironically she's doing it at the higher ed level and I have the experience from the K twelve level. And so I can keep them alone. Maybe see you come in and they're closing their doors suddenly. But it does, we have to build that relationship over time. But we did use walkthrough data to look at trends. And then based upon the administrator that was there and the feedback that she's also provided with, then you'll know exactly what to kind of focus on with that individual. And you can engage them in that conversation, go through that way. So we do have to build that relationship. Well, this is this puts our earlier conversation in a whole different light. I mean, how do you play this? How do you, the industry, play? Because I can see them going away if you come and say, well, I labeled you as an underperformer. I mean, yeah. it's sort of, that's, you know, the kiss of death yeah. to start with. How do you, how do you brand your maybe, intervention? Maybe to generalize it, no? Like, make it, make it seem as if, it, hey, we're not, we're not coming to you because you're not doing well. It's right. more like, hey, you know, uh, this is a program that we're doing in order to bump up, every, like, the whole institution. We, I don't know, maybe. I just did one. I just did one, and the guy was horrible. I mean, and it was consistently horrible, the worst. So they asked me to come in, they were like, can you come in and go teach with him? I'm like, sure, it was a science class. I was like, not a problem. So he was asked to contact me via email first and uh, send me his slides so that I can give him suggestions. And they called me a consultant, so they said, you know, Oh, Dr. Barral is our teaching consultant. So she wants to come in and she wants to kind of help you strategize and you know give you better modalities of presenting the information based on the student population that you have. I don't hear the hook yet. If I'm if I'm a professor and I think I'm doing a great job, whether I am or not, and somebody tells me somebody's gonna come in and co-teach with me, how do I either I know the, you know what's going on, or, or if that's again that's my question because you could do that, but but sort of if, if, how do you get around that, or how do you, how do you deal with that? Do they do they know why you're really there, or is it sort of if you do do you really succeed in wrapping it in some other pretext like helping your help you have a problem? If, I mean, for example. Your problem is not you; it's your students. But we have this expert in dealing with those kinds of. Students. That's how they wrap it. Okay. Really, and that works. That works for that one time. Do you think, do you think maybe also, and the way that the way that it works, 
but do you think maybe also by doing that immersion and by them experiencing that it helps, like enhance their skills, like what I like, you know, put them in the room, like uh, having them experience it together with other teachers, maybe that improves their performance as well, and then be able to. Well, we've actually based a lot of the data for people that you know may need the extra help on the seminar, the surveys that we give students. Yeah. So the actual feedback from the students is presented to people. And it's you know this and this and this and that. And everybody kind of the beauty of the liberal arts department is that everybody has a sort of professional angle. Everybody has a skill, a specialized skill that they're good at. And certain people are better at working with certain certain ranges of students. And so every single campus that we experience has a different group or subset population. So there are some times where it, it's a cultural thing. A, a professor, not that the professor is not a good teacher, or the, but maybe the approach is off and it's completely cultural. And the person doesn't realize that, you know, this is offensive, sort of like the the young man who told us, the, you know, the Asians, they don't like to get tipped because it's, uh, it's against their culture. And it's, it's sometimes it'll be cultural. And the thing is that for, for them, for, for a lot of the administration, I'm the go-to Spanish person because I'm a full-time Spanish professor. So the majority of the people sitting in the classroom are also minorities. And that makes a world of a difference when you're providing an engaging technique and things like that. And sometimes maybe somebody's not reaching them because of the approach and they're not realizing, well, you're, you, t you touch have this type of student in your class versus this type of student in your class. So a lot of times that does work in the context of, you know, Melissa's great, she relates, because she looks like one of them, because she is one of them, because she went through our system and she got out. And so people are, they tend to have this, you know, it's like a down for me, like they feel sorry, so let me, I mean, you know, they're not, they don't feel like I'm trying to steal their thunder, is what I'm trying to say, like they, they understand I'm there to help them and I'm there so, to facilitate. So their guard is down? Right, sure. yeah. And plus, we don't have a tenure system, so that kind of changes it too. Explain that last part again a little bit, because that was intriguing. I was just about to say, this is your cheat sheet, in a way, right? <laughs> yeah. In this process. This yeah. is, you're being sneaky also. Um, but how, is it, how do you manage to get them to think that it's, it's like you're, it's a come down for you that's like, oh, well, you have to do this, as opposed to you're being, how does that work again? In, in you understand my question? I'm not sure I'm making it clear. In what context? In well, you had, I thought you had said something about how they come in and they, they let their guard down in part because uh, they they understand well you under you you relate to these students better than you know or you relate to them well. But you also it also sounds like you said like well somehow your that somehow that 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 makes them feel better about you because you're somehow lesser. In some, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not I'm not sure I'm capturing. It, it, it sounded like there was something more than the simple fact that, well, you know how to relate to this population of students. That there was something else there that it's somehow their benefit, that's what it is. How are they, how do they get the impression that they're benefiting you by allowing you to come into their class? By allowing me to come into their yes. class? Yes, how do they get the impression they're benefiting you? Well, they're benefiting me because, and this is the whole thing, the whole premise of it is I want to really focus on learning styles, getting people to learn, engaging the students. So for me, every time I get to come into a classroom, it's a new arena. It's a new subset of learning for me. It's a new thing that I gotta pick up and I look at it as a challenge. So I don't I don't come to the professor and say, listen, you sit down, you're terrible. And what I say to the professor is, let's talk together. What are the challenges as you see them in the classroom? And let's focus on those challenges. And how do we get these students to turn around for challenges? And how do we get the negative to become positive? Because you can do it, and I'm, I'm going to show you. And sometimes they'll say, like, well, how do you do that? And I'll be like, all right, well, this is, a lot of times it'll be new faculty, people that just came out of college, adjuncts, people that maybe don't have the experience, you know. So I'm working with, what, seven years of experience. It makes a world of a difference once you're, you've been in the trenches for a while. Right, okay, that angle I understand. I guess I still don't understand where at some point when you say I'm going to show you, at some point they must realize you're not in there to, they're not in there, they're not there to benefit you, you're there to benefit them. Um, that is, because you're, you're ultimately trying to get them to use this method. But not only this method, it, it can be anything, because 
We've actually done presentations on other methods as well. This is just the one we're doing right now. Okay. We've done different kinds of stuff. So they know, they know that Amber's a resource and they know that I'm a resource in terms of just different things. Like if you don't want to be traditional and you want to try something new, ask Amber.